Welcome back to Trojan Sports Now. We have a very special guest this week, the new man in charge of Trojan Athletics, uh, John Hartwell. Thank you for joining us here today. Good to be with you. Glad, glad to be here in Troy and uh, be on board. Now, I'm, you have really just started, so this is a, a new time for you, and I'm sure they've kept you busy over there. So what has it been like so far? Well, it's been great. Uh, yeah, it has been a lot, uh, literally in, in a day and a half or almost two days on the job now. But uh, really excited to get started. You know, the, uh, it's been about two and a half weeks since, uh, since I was named the AD in the press conference. And, and that two-week period in between, uh, you know, I've had so many things going through my head, things that I want to get started on. So it, it's nice to finally get here and uh, get the sleeves rolled up and, and get started. Now, you're new to the university as an employee, but you're familiar with Troy, having grown up in Alabama uh, from Mobile, also um, having worked at, at a, a, a rival school at, while in the A-Sun, while Troy was in the A-Sun. Um, but what's it like being back here or seeing the university as it is now? Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, the time I was at Georgia State, uh, and, and Troy was obviously in the league then, uh, actually going all the way back to when it was called the Trans-America Athletic Conference, or the TAC, as many people <laughs> refer to it, and then uh, evolving into the Atlantic Sun. But, uh, you know, and the, the time gap there between the last time I had been on campus prior to, to my interview uh, was almost 10 years. And to see the growth uh, with Troy Athletics, the, the university as a whole, and the facilities, uh, you know, I've been quite impressed. We, we certainly have, have work to do, but uh, a great basis to build from, uh, not only from a facility standpoint, but from a, a coaches and administration uh, standpoint as well. And you're coming from Ole Miss, and just talk about what your role was at Ole Miss. Sure, I, I spent nine and a half years at Ole Miss, uh, started there as the associate AD for finance. My background uh, previous to to getting into a, directly into athletic administration some 15 years ago. Uh, I did spend some time as a CPA in public accounting. So I went there and that role really expanded and over the last three, three and a half years I, I had been the, uh, the deputy AD or the number two AD, you know, person in administration. And, and you know, people say, well, hey, you, you go from an SEC school to Troy, uh, you know, you know, less resources in terms right. of the budget. But as I told people during my interview and I've told several folks since then, you know, uh, that is correct. But in the big scale of the SEC, you know, Ole Miss is in the bottom two of 14 schools in terms of budget uh, availability. So I really have uh, both at Ole Miss and previously the, the six plus years I was at Georgia State, uh, have worked with, with smaller budgets uh, in competition against larger budgets and larger schools. You know, if, uh, Ole Miss's budget's roughly $60 million all in, and you've got Alabama and Florida and Tennessee. Uh, you know, I think Auburn is above uh, $100 million now, too. So uh, just because you have a smaller budget does not mean there aren't expectations of your sports to not just compete but to win against those bigger schools. So I think those skills learned there uh, will translate very nicely to Troy because, yes, we, we do have to think outside the box in terms of growth of revenues. Well, and does your background as a CPA and working in that the financial segment, do you think that helps you with the way that uh, college athletics has become such a big business? I really do, and, and thinking back, it was, uh, you know, sometime uh, in the winter uh, of 1996 when a guy named Les Robinson, who at that time uh, had just become, he had been the basketball coach at NC State, he fo followed up Jim Valvano and had migrated to the athletic director's position there, uh, and, and who happened to be my college coach at the Citadel, uh, he and I were visiting one day, and he said, you know, John, you should really consider a career in athletic administration because he said soon to be gone are going to be the days where old coaches migrate to being athletic right. directors because it is way too complex of a business, so many things with contracts. And he said, your experience not only from the financial side but having been a student athlete and, and contacts and relationships with so many people in the collegiate sports uh, business, uh, you know, you should really consider it. And so literally – I did a total career change, took a huge cut in pay, and then in, uh, in 1997 uh, went from being a chief financial officer at a very large company to being an assistant AD for finance at Georgia State. But, it, but it's a career move that uh, I wouldn't trade for the world and, and you know, 
am very excited about uh, uh, what that's led me right. to today is the AD's job here at Troy. Well, and something you talked about just a minute ago, talking about the difference between working at an SEC school and a Sunbelt school, maybe not, may not quite be as different as people think, but there are some differences that you'll have to work with. Um, at Ole Miss, you have the, uh, the long-time traditions of having uh, a big fan base, where at Troy, it's growing. I mean, how do you work to continue to grow on that fan base? Sure. I think one of the big things, and I had a conversation yesterday with Dr. Hawkins about this, is one of the things that uh, was implemented at Ole Miss, and this was only about three years ago, because, again, uh, you know, you think SEC and, you know, 100,000 people at Bryant-Denny right. Stadium or at Neyland Stadium. Well, at Ole Miss, you know, our, uh, we averaged about 52 or 53, so it, so it was smaller. But at the end of the day, whether you're at Ole Miss or Alabama or Troy, uh, it's got to be about the fan experience and obviously the quality of your product right. on the field. But uh, one of the things that was implemented at Ole Miss was a, a fan feedback, if you will, or you know, to, to come back and rate what we did, send out to all your season ticket holders, do the survey, you know, what did you like about what we did, what did, didn't you like, what would you like to see, and get the feedback from the fans to enhance the game day experience. Because really what we would like to do is to not make Troy football, and I'll use football as an example, but we, we want to spread this to all of our sports, but not make Troy football a three or three and a half hour experience where you pull up, park, go in and watch the game and leave. We want it to not only be a full day experience, but hopefully a week, right. weekend experience for folks to come to Troy, right. which helps not only your football team, your entire athletic department, the university, but also the, the city of Troy and the surrounding area uh, in terms of revenue generation and everything else. But getting the feedback from the fans to, to make it an enjoyable experience or a more enjoyable experience is very key. And obviously at the end of the day, uh, winning uh, has a whole lot to right. do with that. But we, we want to encompass that whole concept and again, apply it to football, but we want to apply it to softball and baseball and tennis and everything else that we do. I don't want to keep on comparing Ole Miss and Troy, but you kind of got the Grove atmosphere that you have at uh, Ole Miss football games that you always hear so much about, kind of bringing that to Troy. Troy's got a great tailgating experience, but just trying to take it to the next level. Sure. Uh, again, it's about opportunities for folks to, to interact and to, to be a welcoming uh, place to come. It, it, it's about customer service. Uh, uh, we want to make sure that, that we find ways to, uh, to allow people to come with great ease, whether it's you know, traffic flow in, into the stadium, uh, whether it's our ushers you know, say, hello, welcome to Troy Athletics. You know, we're so glad to have you today. To saying thank you on the way out the door, uh, to the concessionaire folks uh, being courteous and being helpful and being responsive. So there are so many little things that go into it that, that we will pay attention to detail and, and make sure that we enhance that game day experience for folks. Well, what other uh, short-term goals and even long-term goals do you have for the athletics department? Sure, we, we've got uh, quite a list uh, and probably uh, the, the two main areas that I'll talk about that I'll focus on are facilities and then um, you know, elevating uh, our standing, uh, when I say our, the entire athletic department standing within the Boobas Cup, which is right. the, uh, the overall sports uh, standings for the Sun Belt, which unfortunately we've, we've been at, in the lower tier the last couple of years. Uh, but one of the, the keys as I meet here over the next couple of weeks with our head coaches individually is, is hey, we're doing questionnaires for them. We, we want to know uh, what the strengths of your program are, what the weaknesses, what opportunities you see, what are the threats. And at the end of the day, the, probably the, the biggest key question is, hey, tell me three to four things that you need for your program to consistently compete at the upper echelon of the Sun Belt Conference. Because if they are competing for the championship in our conference, then that's going to parlay itself into postseason NCAA competition, right. which we all want you know, we want all of our teams to be involved in. So that, that's very key, uh, finding those, those missing pieces. And, and you know, uh, we are going to have expectations and accountability. Yes, it's going to be, you know, our administration's job to provide those resources. But, hey, uh, we're, we're going to go out and do that, and, and we're going to have expectations for our coaches. And I think they're excited about that. Uh, you know, the other 
key thing is facility improvements uh, with probably the marquee being, I can't tell you how many times I've met people and, you know, one of the first things out of their mouth, when are we going to get started on that north end right. zone project, which uh, uh, is, is very important to us. Not so much today from the seating capacity mm -hmm. standpoint, but obviously from, uh, you know, football locker room to coaches' offices to meeting rooms to a, a whole plethora of things. And, and very soon on our plate are going to be a couple of brainstorming sessions to get all of the potential constituents together to say, hey, what all do we need to be included in this building? Do, do we need athletic administration in here? Do we need to have an external wing that has our fundraising and ticket sales and marketing folks all in there? You know, does it make sense to potentially move our weight room uh, from where it is in the tower now to over there? The same with uh, our sports medicine uh, group. Because the last thing you want to do is rush into a facility like that and, you know, let's say round figures it's a $20 million facility and to be in it for six months and say, you know, we really, gosh, we forgot to do this or we forgot to do that. So I want to make sure that because it, it's not a building for three or five or ten years, this is going to be a 30-year uh, plus building that, that needs to be state of the art for as long as it can be. And obviously there is a seating component in there. Um, premium seating is, is what is going to foot uh, part of the bill right. for that. And we do have a demand right now. All 29 of our suites are, are at capacity and sold out. So we do have some additional folks. Okay. So, uh, you know, being able to in include some suites in there. We're not full in our st current stadium club, uh, but we do need to plan for, uh, you know, growth in the future. So an area that could eventually be converted to, uh, to club seating as well. So all of those components go in there. Uh, and, and that's not our only project, though. Right. We've got several others. You know, we've, we've got some improvements at the tennis facility uh, looking to uh, provide at least uh, two, if not more, courts as, as indoor courts to be able to have indoor uh, practice and matches when it's raining. Uh, softball improvements, uh, you know, our golf facility. Obviously, uh, with, with the new Trojan Arena on board, we lost several holes of, of the on-campus facility, so to make them a very state-of-the-art and nice uh, practice facility and driving range. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got some things in all of our sports that are out there on the table. And, and really what that facilities parlays into, obviously you've got to have the, the funding to right. do that. So uh, uh, I will be uh, hot and heavy on the road in terms of uh, going to, to visit with folks and continuing our development efforts, uh, as well as looking at some other revenue sources. You know, we could talk forever about that, but uh, looking at our contracts that generate revenue, whether it's our uh, multimedia rights and, and sponsorships contract, our apparel and shoe contract, uh, you know, various things like that. So I, I've definitely got a plate full. All right, well, we're running out of time, but we're going to end this with uh, some questions maybe the fans want to get to know, to know you a little bit better. Sure. We'll start that off with your favorite movie. Sure. It, it, it is a sports movie, okay. but it's not, you know, it's not football or basketball. Field of Dreams, oh, by far. Oh, that's my favorite movie. Great movie. Uh, favorite food? Uh, gumbo and fried crab claws. I can't <laughs> narrow it to one, but I, but I am a seafood lover. Well, you're down from Mobile, so that's to be expected. Uh, favorite music? Uh, my music taste span the spectrum. Okay. I mean, it's, it's everything from, uh, if you had to put one, and this goes back to my Gulf Coast flavor, Buffett has to be up okay. there. But I go from Buffett to George Strait to ACDC to Journey, so you can, and anything in between. Do you have to listen to something to get you in the mood for, for a game before a game, or do you, do you have to worry I, about You know, I, I like to pick up the tempo. I, I go back many years to my playing days, and, you know, it, it wasn't something mellow. It was, you know, I, I like to, I won't say I'll go as far as headbanging, but, uh, but something to, to get me motivated. Okay. Uh, what was the last book you read? Uh, the last book I read was a book called The Power of Who okay. by uh, Bob Bodine, who happens to be a motivational speaker and an executive search guy. Um, a great book. Uh, it takes a little different view of, of networking and, and how to reach your life goals. Okay. And uh, not that you're going to have any of this anymore, but what do you like to do when you get some free time? Free time, uh, I love fishing. Uh, the, the thing I will tell people is uh, being closer to saltwater to I love saltwater fishing. There's nothing as right. exciting as hearing that reel sing out. But, uh, you know, I, I, 
I play at golf. I won't say I play golf. I, I <laughs> hack a little bit. If I, you know, if I'm a 17, 18 handicap, I'm I'm good in there. But uh, and, and obviously family time. I have two young girls too. I have I have a three and a half year old and uh, and a four month old. So uh, spending family time is is number one priority. Well, we'd like to welcome them and you as well to the Trojan family and uh, looking forward to all that's in store. So thank you for joining us here Great. today. Thank you. Trojan Sports Now.